Well, welcome. It's uh, the Greg and Lisa show, and I'm Lisa. And I'm Greg. And you know what? Our topic today is... It's marriage. It sure is. Um, as we kind of said before in the short, uh, I just want to not be like me, because I have experienced a few marriages, and I have failed every time. But hopefully you're going to learn from my mistakes, and, and God is going to really show you what he has in mind for marriage and how to have a successful marriage that lasts a long time. So hindsight's 2020 and I really want you to learn from my hindsight because it is truly 2020. But we did talk last week, Greg, you know, about growing through divorce. Yes. So yes. this time we want to look at growing through marriage, right. growing your marriage. So, yep. Um, in 2022, there were 2,401,148 weddings. In 2023, 133.1 million adults age 15 or older were married in the U.S. Um so, yeah, those, those are numbers, but we also have big divorce numbers. So for these marriages to last, obviously it takes commitment, work, compromise, patience, uh, contentment, doing a show with your mother-in-law if, if called upon. Hey, yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, I mean, obviously those other things are more yeah. important. But <laughs> it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of work to make work. a marriage work. Yeah, work is probably the, the biggest word right. out of that. <laughs> that's right. But, you know, God has given us specific instructions in the Bible to help us to stay married and to know how we are really supposed to act as husband and wife. We are going to start out with these verses today because a lot of times we do them in the end. But if we do them now, you'll have them as um, reference as we talk about some of the things that we're going to talk yeah, about today. Yeah, and it sets a context right, for the whole does. thing. Yep. So, so uh, Matthew chapter 19, verses 4 through 6. Haven't you read that at the beginning, the creator made them male and female and said, for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate. And Proverbs 31, 10 through 12 in the new, the NIV says, a wife of noble character who can find she is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. Does that count Hallmark movies in good? <laughs> or which, which, is that, is that good or harm, would you say? Well, I'm a girl. I like Hallmark movies. So I would probably say it's yeah, a good The Bible thing. doesn't really specifically say whether those are included in that verse, but we'll have to talk about that later. So yeah. also, I mean, a lot of good stuff in Proverbs, obviously. Um, Proverbs 18, verse 22, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. And Proverbs 19, 19 says, houses and wealth are inherited from parents, but a prudent wife is from the Lord. Okay, and then... Uh, 1 Timothy 3, verse 11 from the NIV. In the same way, the women are to be worthy of respect, not malicious talkers, but temperate and trustworthy in everything. And um, just as with a lot of these verses, um, can be applied to both husband and wife. Right. I mean, a lot, in a lot of translations of the Bible, we'll say he, talk about man. It's really like mankind. Like a, a lot right. of the stuff that seems maybe focused on one gender is, right. is you know, yeah, I you, agree. You don't escape a lot of the instructions. <laughs> no, no, you don't. And Hebrews 13, 4 says, Marriage should be honored by all, and the marriage bed kept pure for God will judge the adulterer and all the sexual immoral. All right, um, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ, God, just as in Christ God forgave you. And Ephesians 5.25, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. And husbands or wives, you know, are called to love one another and treat each other well. And couples are to look at Christ to show and get an example of how, you know, God loves and how we are to love. And so, yeah, there are, you know, verses in the Bible um, stating the wife is to submit to the husbands as he is the head of the spiritual household. Um, the husband also, in return, has to love his wife uh, as God loves the church, and he has to love his wife as much as he loves himself. Um, submitting does not mean being a slave. 
it means you are to love um, him as God would love him unconditionally. Um, God put man in charge of the household to provide for his family, to guide and protect them, to lead them spiritually through the word of God and by example. Um, so yeah, it's not that's very different than the way some people take yeah. women should, you know, yeah. submit. That's that submitting word gets a lot of people hung yeah. up a lot of times, you know. But if you look at it the way God intended it to be, yeah. it's not, you know, what a lot of people Yeah, and think. husbands have their own way they have to right. you know, submit and sacrifice as well. So Correct. It's not just a one sided <laughs> yeah, deal it's, there. Yeah, it's not. And Colossians three nineteen, husbands love your wives and do not be harsh with them. And first Peter chapter three verse seven, likewise husbands live with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to the woman, since they are heirs with you of the grace of life, so that your prayers may not be hindered. So if you're mean to your okay, so no, I don't think that applies to Hallmark. I was trying to think, have I been mean? Is that why my <laughs> prayers of that ending have not no, I don't think so. <laughs> All right. So. But there are lots more verses, and there's a lot more verses on love and the relationship, and we are going to talk a lot more about that when we talk about the topic of love. But today we want to talk about growing a successful marriage. And some of the information today came from the Crossroads Church website and from BetterHelp um, Counseling website and our own experiences. But first, um, the Bible talks about not being equally yoked and not being unequally yoked and you know a lot of people they confuse that word yoked with an egg yolk no it's and that, not the same thing that's yeah. not the same not thing. at all no yep. but you know sometimes people do and a lot of times people think you know it deals with interracial marriages it deals with a lot of different things but if you know what a yolk is a yolk is the wooden t mm -hmm. that goes between like two oxen that are pulling a cart Yep. And they have to work together. And if they don't work in unison and they fight against each other, then it's not going to work. And so, you know, being equally yoked means, you know, working together, having the same values, beliefs, morals, mm -hmm. um, and things of that nature. But, you know, that's what it, um, Corinthians 6.14 says, do not be yoked together with unbelievers. And... Um, I was probably unequally yoked and you know the consequence of that was I had you know failed marriages yeah so, and you know that this is a tough one right because I don't think any two people are ever on the same stage of their spiritual walk right so well I don't even know that it's yeah, so much a spiritual it, it's walk. not it's not yeah. stages of the walk it's no yeah. But it is about, you know, uniting two people that want to spend the rest of their lives together. Right. And I think sometimes, and I did forget my cards tonight, um, but sometimes, you know, you get so caught up in the aura of being in love that you don't always sit and talk about the reality. Of what it's going to be like to yeah, be married. Right, yeah. about what a yeah. marriage is going to be. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and it's, even if, you know, for folks who don't believe in the Bible, if you think about it, if you have two completely opposing worldviews, mm -hmm. that's that's very difficult to have in a marriage. Right. And how and common sense would tell you how do you think it's gonna work? Not well. If, yeah, not well. Yeah. yeah, but you know, but God makes it clear. He wants, you know, our marriages to be for life. Um, and he wants you to have the best opportunity and chance that you can to have that. And sometimes you need to go through premarital counseling or counseling um, before you make that commitment. And it's all about, you know, working together. And second things, and that's why I was just saying I forgot my cards. I have that stack of cards that is all cards on the table, everything that needs to be discussed before you make an informed decision and tie the knot in getting married. Because yeah. we talked last week about nobody gets married to get divorced. No. And in order to have the best possible chance, you need to talk about anything and everything. Right, and that's big right. things and little things like, uh, you mm -hmm. know, some of the points, some of the things on the cards, discuss who takes out the trash, household chores, you know, don't make assumptions about that stuff. Um, right. Talk about finances, bank accounts, debt, uh, kids, daycare, uh, living arrangements. Uh, what about church, religion, God? Uh, and, you know, obviously we, we support believers, of course, but... Mm -hmm. 
even if you're not, you still need to talk about those oh, yeah, <laughs> those things. Yeah, because um, it's about making yeah, your marriage last yep, and be yep. successful. Um, there's so much more. Um, yeah. And mm -hmm. we don't have the cards to show, but it, yeah. it, you know, it's it's a big old stack. Right. It, it's a it's a ton of stuff, and it mm -hmm. seems daunting, but you know, it's stuff that it's married important. couples commonly deal with every day, every week. Right. <laughs> right. And blended families and people that are going into a relationship with, you know, prior assets. It's things that you really need to talk about. Sometimes people don't want to talk about them because they think, oh, it'll be okay. Yeah. Or, or I know enough already. Um, but like, you know, when you're planning a wedding and getting married, which is costly and stressful, you know, you are in that euphoric love state and you think everything is going to be great. And when you start planning the marriage and getting everything to go the way oh, you want sure. it to be, yeah. you already have stuff that's... Um, that surfacing during that process and it is hard but you know you're going to be together and the goal is that you're going to be together the rest of your life where you know love is high reality is low and on the scale of things you know you get married and then what yeah and, and it, it can sound silly like why would we talk about who takes the trash out mm -hmm. it happens every week <laughs> And, right. and it doesn't take itself out. No, no. <laughs> you know, it, so it, 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 it's one of those things where it seems minor, but week after week. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, some things, you know, were always stereotypical where the guy took the trash out and the woman did the dishes. And, you know, today, but in that day, a lot of times the women were home all day and they didn't work outside the house. Yeah. It's and a, now it's you different. have, you know, a dual income household and you have two people working and you need to have two people taking care of the kids and you need to have two people yeah. taking care of so, the household. So, it's a rotation. Or, right. Right. You know, I, I do the dishes. I do the trash. It, it, I'm actually lame. I really enjoy the dishes and I got these tabs to like clean the dishwasher and i, I love it but yeah. that's not what we're talking about <laughs> yeah but it is good you like to do that though <laughs> it's wonderful I, yeah i'm so no. lame but no <laughs> so but you know life settles in you yeah. know after you get married right. and all of the hoopla is over and it's like what now so yeah hopefully you really have you know mm -hmm. put all those cards on the table and you're starting your marriage or continuing your marriage um, you know, with open communication, direction, uh, you know, have settled, discussed a lot of issues that may, may have come up, may, may or may not have come up. And I think that's a, a good thing to just to point about those cards is, okay, maybe you didn't do them when you got married, but it's never too late to, right, it's never to, too late to get to those things yeah. talked about. And it's better to talk about them than, than not talk than about, not talk about yeah. them. And then that thing comes up. And when yeah. these things come up, even if they're minor, the minor things have a habit of coming up at the worst possible time. You're trying to get kids ready and the yeah. thing happens and who's going to do that. And right. you're trying to get out the door to church or dinner, or, you know, right. what have yeah. you. Yeah. And whether you're newlyweds or you've been married for 50 plus years, you know, you still have to have open lines of communication and you still have to talk to each other and you still have to try to grow your marriage because you still want to be in that marriage until, you know, you take your last breath. Um, you know, so growing your marriage and making it successful takes a lot of work. It's not easy. It's full. Life is full of challenges. And, you know, we need to look at um, things that we are going to deal with or you are going to deal with and how to deal with it in a positive, good way and, and what to look for. But if you look at positives, you know, a lot of times we tend to look at the negative. And I was listening to a radio show on the way over okay. here. Yeah. And he said, you have to have five positives to one negative for you not to dwell on the negative. And when you think yeah. about it, it makes sense. That's true. We, we because we to, focus yeah. on the negative. But you need to have that, you know, the, the no, extra positives. That makes sense because a lot of times positives, they just kind of fade into the background. We take them in life as things that are supposed to happen and mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, barely notice it. Or <laughs> right, right. Yep. And some, you have to sometimes, you know, turn your negatives into positives and you have to keep your sense of humor and you have to laugh more. And so you have to let things roll off. Uh, but you do need to talk if there's a problem. And here's the question is, how do you communicate with somebody who won't talk to you? Well, um, you know, pray, maybe write letters, notes to each other, schedule a date, um, a neutral territory, spend time together, you know, seek counseling. Um, and, and that's not to say like introverts are allowed to be married, <laughs> but yeah. that's, that's why we put cards on the table. Cause you know, 
that personality doesn't work with every other personality. Right. Sometimes opposites attract, sometimes they don't. <laughs> right, and sometimes opposites attract, and that's what brought you together, but the opposites will also be what tears you apart. Yeah, it, it can be challenging. Because I had yeah. that, because, you know, people always liked me because I was an independent person. But, you know, when it got down to it, it was my independence that tore us apart. And so yeah. you have to really, you know, look at everything as a whole. Yeah. And, and you know, obviously talk about, you know, mm -hmm. all the cards on the table. But at some point, you know, you got to think about what this stuff really means, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. You do. And it's, uh, it's important. So the other question would be, how did your relationship begin? So was it built on a firm foundation in Jesus Christ? Are you guys equally yoked? Uh, was your relationship started on sexual attraction, passion, um, bantering? You need a firm foundation, and the only firm foundation of those things I said is Jesus Christ. <laughs> right, he is. I mean, that's the firm foundation, and we talked before about, yeah. you know, it takes that relationship with Jesus yeah. Christ, both parties, yeah. the husband and wife, yeah. to make the marriage successful you know, and there's, work. There's nothing wrong necessarily with sexual attraction, passion, or bantering, oh, no. but... But if that's, that's what not you that's together, not what you build the house on, right? Exactly, <laughs> yeah. because if that's what you built the house on, when the rains came down, mm -hmm. the house will crumble, and and that's what you see a lot of times. Uh, you know, yep. you have that you know that passion or sexual attraction, and real life sets in, and that passion and sexual attraction is is gone by the wayside because you don't have that firm foundation. All right. And you need forgiveness. Forgiveness has a positive impact on the longevity, longevity of the marriage and its stability. And forgiveness leads to that stability and also yeah. a better quality of marriage. Forgiveness is hard sometimes and it depends on, you know, what the issue it is. It is a but... deliberate choice and it can be very difficult depending on the mm -hmm. issue. But even the minor issues, we get so, like you said, we get so caught up in the negative. It, it can right. be hard sometimes to just pull back and be like, does this thing really matter? Yeah. I mean, I mean yeah. in the whole scheme he, of things. He, he or she did something that was less than ideal. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. But. And nobody's perfect. Will that matter in a year? Will it matter in a month? Did yeah. it matter five minutes after it happened? Probably yeah. not. Right. Probably not. So, so yeah, you need to have a willingness. Um, like we said, you know, making a marriage work is hard. Um, it requires attention, effort, sacrifice, compromise, patience, listening, learning willingness to grow work <laughs> yeah work that's the bad that's the big one work <laughs> right so the question is you know do marriages last well depends on the people involved their background their level of commitment their willingness to do whatever it takes to make it work i keep saying work we keep saying work <laughs> no matter yeah. what <laughs> right but it's true yeah. and you know we've talked over the last couple of weeks about the number one reason that you know people get divorced is a lack of commitment you know that was the number yeah. one and before the number one was always money and uh, you know but now it is you know Oh, we're not, we, I don't have the commitment to stay married, so let's just get divorced. It's not as um, a firm a foundation as you would or should have had right. you know, to start that marriage relationship. Now, let's speak, finances are still pretty high up there on oh, the yeah. list, though, right? Oh, yeah. But it, it does make a little sense, because obviously as the, the pandemic affected the economy, and I suppose mm -hmm. in some cases, if money stinks for everybody, yeah. <laughs> there's but maybe when, a little bit less of a yeah. <laughs> to fight about there. It's, but also when we talked about, you know, the three things that couples fight over, which is sex, money, and kids. So if you already know sex, money, and kids is a big key factor in a marriage relationship, then why wouldn't you talk about it and iron it out before you get started? Because exactly. if you did that, that takes three of the key factors right out of the five reasons for divorce and the and the, the three main reasons for arguments and contention in a marriage. So sometimes, you know, we are our own worst enemies because we mm -hmm. don't. We don't talk. We don't discuss things. We don't plan things out and think about things. But, you know, what are the benefits of marriage? Marriage does have its benefits and it is an institution really that was created, you know, by God right? Um, for a man and a woman to get married yeah. and leave their mother and start a home and a family of their own. Yeah. And we're going to go over some of these benefits and, you know, you, you might chuckle when you hear some of these because with, um, you know, a secular worldview, you're going to hear some of this and be like, 
okay, ha, ha, ha. Yeah. But, it, it, you know, for instance, what are the benefits of marriage? Positive emotional health. Uh, married couples report having a higher satisfaction for life versus people without a spouse. You have yeah. to work at that. <laughs> you have to work at it. And, you know, what surprises me about that is people without a spouse don't have to worry about fighting or arguing with anybody. Right. So why, why would a married couple that fights and have to, or, you know, has that higher satisfaction of life have, you know, a higher satisfaction when somebody who is single and doesn't it's, have a spouse? You know, it? you got to do it the right way. Cause yeah, you do. A, a happy person who's alone, I mean, you can, you can do marriage the wrong way and be a lot worse off. Right. It's, yeah, you it, it's, can. it's, doing it the right way but you know just mm -hmm. i can relate to, to being alone people don't want to be alone that that's why mm -hmm. this says what it says right, right but you can go do a bad job <laughs> yeah and and be be a worse because you can as kind of as sad as it can be to be alone it's worse being with somebody and still being alone exactly there's nothing worse than being in a marriage and feeling alone right you know and that's why open communication is a is a vital key to the marriage relationship um also intimacy is a benefit you know it's said that um intimacy occurs more in marriages than with single counterparts uh tax benefits to being married which i think that's a funny one but it is a benefit um, because yeah. it's true. Married couples have more tax benefits available to them than single people do. Right, right. Yeah. And I can just imagine, and I'm not, you know, doing deep math on this, but, you know, two individual tax returns, the, the percent, it, the way the brackets work, it's better to have them together. Yeah. Yeah. Companionship. Couples that live together, you know, they state that they are happier day by day due to the companionship and the closeness. And long-term marriages develop the uh, sense of assurances over time. The relationships get deeper, the friendships, and over time as they enter different phases of their marriage, the longer it goes, it's a lot easier and deeper and the relationship is better than when they first got married. And when you think about that, it's because you experienced a lot of life together. You have started building that relationship to be a more mature marriage right, relationship right. where you can count on each other and you do have that relationship that companionship that is needed for a long yeah and, marriage. And, and in that it's really reflective of a lot of human relationships at that mm -hmm. point now marriage is different but if you think about being young in school and that you know person you're still friends with 30 40 50 20 years later what have mm -hmm. you it's because of <laughs> that yeah and it's because the, of the work the and the relationship of yeah. and it's, it's been worked on and, right. but we you know we talked about it obviously we, we had our you know episode on divorce but you know the top five reasons for divorce lack of commitment infidelity sex um, conflict you know kids regretting marriage and financial problems and, you know we talked uh, this week again reiterating that the big uh, conflicts in relationships are sex, money, and kids. Yeah. So let's talk about those issues ahead of time so that they don't become an issue later on in marriage. Yeah. And, uh, and honestly, we, we keep repeating some of these things, but that's because they're really important. Yeah. yeah they really it's not are. like we don't realize we just talked about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is that um, for presentation? You tell them what you're going to tell them, then you tell them, and then you tell them what you told them. And so we can't reiterate enough that, yeah. you know, you know, and you don't do that with every single thing, but, no, but no. your key points, right? They right? are. If something's important, you want to make sure you're getting it out. Exactly. And so all that, you know, the conflict and working on it and talking about it, it, it all goes back to honesty, trust, uh, communications, and really respect for one another. Right. And respect for each other in a marriage is a key. Um, a lot of times I know husbands say they don't feel respected. And the woman says that they don't feel loved. And, you know, there are the five love languages out there, you know, mm -hmm. uh, written by Warren but, um, or Chapman. The, you know, you have to know each other and spend that time with each other to know how to communicate what each other needs right. in that marriage and that relationship. And the, those, you know, wanting to be respected and, and not feeling loved, like, 
those two things are not mutually exclusive and those arguments really can get into like a which came first the chicken or the egg and yeah. nobody wins that one right. That's <laughs> nobody right. really wins that That's one don't. so and so you know you're going to face challenges in a marriage and marriages have their unique set of challenges yes, and one of the things you have to look at when there is a challenge you have a, a choice you can either run toward your spouse or you can run away from your spouse. And it's sometimes hard in the midst of a divorce, or not a divorce, but an argument yeah. or uh, um, something that you're disagreeing on or a challenge to run toward them. And so sometimes when emotions are high, it's just like anything else. Sometimes you need to step away before you actually communicate so that you don't say something that you're going to regret saying. Maybe you take 20 minutes and then you come back and talk and you say, you know what? Let's take a 20. Everybody, you know, goes their own way for 20 minutes, cools down, and then comes back and talks about, you know, the situation. Um, we teach our kids to count to 10 and then walk away or respond. And sometimes, you know, we have to take our own advice yeah. as adults. Right, because uh, like you said, running towards your spouse is a choice you have to make. That, just to be clear, sometimes you do need that cool down time, right? Like running toward, that does not mean badger a person. That does not always mean okay this has to be discussed at this very right. second. Right. And that's why in a communication or one of the cards is, you know, sometimes a marriage will have a word that says, you know what, I need a timeout. And it could be a stupid, you know, word, oh, as, right. you know, pinky finger or something. And But if yeah. one of you says that in the marriage, you know exactly that, you know, now's not the time to talk about it. We'll revisit it in 20 minutes or another time that you know you need that time to digest that event right so. um so next little thing we want to discuss here um you know infidelity one of those things that really can end a marriage um some may forgive and mend the marriage uh, with time and counseling it takes time to rebuild honesty and trust after something like that um it takes a lot of prayer and seeking god's will but there isn't anything too big for God to handle. And I feel like I heard that in a song one time. I, yeah, there's a song. <laughs> and so if you're both willing and want to save the marriage, like it is possible. Uh, it's not always guaranteed. I don't know your situation. I don't know how bad the infidelity was. I don't know the pattern. I don't know everything that's gone on. No, but it comes down to are you both willing and want to save right. the marriage? And it comes down to your relationship with Jesus Christ. Right. And it comes down to, you know, can you get past it and move on in building that long lasting marriage? And that's so, something that, you know, a Christian counselor, a faith-based counselor will work with you on and you'll be able to make that decision. And, you know, we yeah. talked last week about, you know, the blood of Jesus Christ can cover anything and help anybody, but it takes two willing people. Right. So, you know, we have some ideas here, recommendations, you know, to give for building a long lasting marriage. Um, and the, you know, they're simple points, but, and you really do have to get into them um, in your life, but you pray and put God first. Your marriage is second after that. Your kids are third. And then from that, you know, foundation of priority, you can focus on building a healthy marriage relationship uh, through nurturing and caring and, and scheduling couple only time. You need to find a good Bible based church. Um, God doesn't really care if you ever have billions of dollars or not. So can't take it with you when you go. <laughs> no, so don't, you know, not, not, don't, you know, probably don't go with those guys. <laughs> no. And there's, you know, you see them on TV, but there are a lot of them locally too. So you yeah. really do have to be careful. All right, you do. And, and you'll, you know, you'll you'll learn to hear it, and it's. And your biggest key is going to be if yeah. they are teaching according to God's word, the Bible. Well, right, and if and you're in the Bible, you know, outside of those services, which is why that's so important, you right. will then have the tools to discern, and you might not be perfect right away, but eventually you'll have a sense of. That didn't sound quite. Yeah, is that really know. what the Bible says? And you'll go back and you'll do your homework. And you should always hold every uh, minister accountable yeah. according to God's word. And that's how you can check. If you go to a church on a Sunday morning and he gives you the scriptures and you don't have the Bible with you and you're not following it, but you write it down, you you know, you go home and you pull it up on your phone or you get the Bible out yeah. and you start doing some some research and reading the Bible and, and you're going to know. And what you're doing in that is biblical. You're not going behind your pastor's no. back. The Bible tells you to do that. Right. So right. Um, 
you know, so obviously find a good Bible-based church, start a hobby you enjoy doing together, keep your emotional love tanks full. Right, and that is, you know, when you think about it, your emotional love tank a lot of times has to do with your feelings and how you're feeling and how you're being treated in the marriage or how you're treating your spouse. If you look at it as a gas tank, only it's the emotional love tank, you can ask yourself daily, is my love tank full? Am I half full? Am I a quarter full? You can also ask yourself, how am I feeding or, you know, helping fuel my spouse's emotional love tank. Mm -hmm. You know, did I send her a card? Did I hug her today? Did I tell her I loved her? Same with the guys. You know, did I tell him, you know, did I, did the wife, did the wife say to the husband, you know, did I, I love right. you today and thank you for, you know, going to work every day and providing for our family. And the, it, the goal is the higher the tank is full, the better the relationship is going to be. It's just like if your tank is on empty with your car, you're not going anywhere. If you're emotional and your love tank is empty in your marriage, you're not going anywhere. That's true. So and true. you really need to pay attention to that. So, yeah, and, and even when you do really well with all that, things are going to come up. Uh, take care of those little things as they arise so that they don't turn into the big things. Yeah, so if somebody's got a problem with the trash not going out, you need to, to talk about it because that little thing will stockpile and whatever little thing happens next and another little thing that happens next and it's just going to snowball into something right. big and it didn't have to be that way and it shouldn't you know ever get to that right so that good open communication is the key you know talking with each other not at right each not other. at each other um anybody can talk at somebody but you really have to talk with that person um, you also need to let each party, each party in the marriage, to have their their own self time. A lot of times, what happens is a marriage is that person loses their own identity, their own hobbies, or the things that they enjoy doing. They gave up to be into the marriage relationship, and it doesn't have to be that way. Um, I will tell you, there was an incident in one of my marriages. I love to paint, and I took a painting class, and I wanted. We were working on painting a sleigh. And there was a big blow up over me going to paint that sleigh in my last class. And I never finished that sleigh to this day. Hmm. And, you know, it's the little things and the things that you lose that if you don't allow that spouse who loves sports to go to sports or WWE, or you don't allow that person that likes to go to lunch with the girls once a month to have that time. And right. it, you know, you are going to lose so much by just not having you know, that time to still be you and to still laugh and to still have fun because that's a different type of relationship than you have with your spouse. Right. So, um, yep, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's all right. No, it's, so, you know, our next one, it, all this stuff can happen. So if you need to seek counseling either for yourself or your spouse or both of you, right, together. do it. Right. That's that's okay. And speaking of things to do together, pray together. That's right. You always, you should either start your day with prayer, end your day with prayer. You really should have a couple's devotions and just take that five, 10 minutes. It doesn't have to be a half hour, an hour. It can be, you know, praying together while you're eating a bowl of cereal at the kitchen table. Right, you right. You know, start your day. It says we're supposed to give God our first fruits and our first fruits are, you know, not only just our income or money or our assets, it's about spending that time with him. And you can find that time that works for you. It could be in the afternoon. It could be in the right. evening. It could be in the morning. It doesn't have to be a set time yeah. or yep. a set way. Right. And, and, you know, prayer seems intimidating for people sometimes, especially together, especially in a group, mm -hmm. you know, out loud. But, um, you know, ultimately, God doesn't care the words you're using and you don't have to be an eloquent speaker no he, he, he cares what you mean yeah, that's right and he knows the desires of your heart he knows the motives of your heart yep. and this list that we gave you isn't all-inclusive you can add more to it uh, that you think is important i've made you know lots of mistakes in my marriages and i know what they are and i've had to go to god and seek repentance and i know that um i really don't want you to be like me strive for that uh, lifelong marriage. I know last week I shared that my mom and dad, you know, lived together. They were married over 60 some years, but they weren't always happy. And I didn't want to 
be in a marriage relationship for that amount of time and not be sure. happy. But I think everybody's desire is to have that somebody to grow old with and spend their life with and to share their life with. And it doesn't mean everybody will. That doesn't mean everybody wants to. And that doesn't always mean that that's what, you know, God has planned for you. But we want God to richly and bless you and your marriage, either if you're getting married or you're in a marriage. We want your marriage to grow and be successful. Right. We want you to seek God first because the Bible says if you seek God first, everything else will come unto you. And, you know, he is always there to listen. So, so always look to God first. His plan yep. is always the best. He always wants far more for us than we can either fathom or imagine. Uh, we are always going to learn, no matter how long you've been married or where you're at in your life, you're always going to be learning. But I would prefer that you learn from some of my mistakes instead of going through the school of hard knocks and having to learn on your own. You know, but it's just like with our kids. We try to tell them things to save them some hurts and bumps in the yep. road. But they have to learn themselves. And sometimes, you know, adults are the exact same way. Yeah, you like but, you bring up the kids, you know, sometimes you just got to jump out of the tree and break your wrist to, <laughs> yeah, to learn. Not why. that anything like that's ever happened, <laughs> but yeah. So, but anyways, as you are getting married or you are married and you're trying to grow your marriage, we want to wish you much, much success and Absolutely. longevity. There is no bad stigma stigma and getting help or seeking counseling or talking to a pastor. You know, it comes down to doing whatever you can do, whatever it takes to stay together, share your family, grow your marriage, and live your life for Christ. So, but you're all in our prayers, and we hope that we've shed some light on some things. Sure. And we'll be praying for you. Right. And, you know, I got to talk about sexual attraction with my mother-in-law, so <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> we will see you next week, everybody. Yes, we will.